didn't have a video for today. But then I did some thinking last night. I'd like to run a hot take by you guys. The title of this video is Don't Buy a B7 RS4, Buy a B5S4 Instead. What the title of this video should be instead is Look in the Mirror Before You Make a Video, Eli. What is going on with my hair? Anyway, now you can't unsee it for the rest of the video. Let's go. Let me explain why. All right, for those of you that don't know, or if you're new to this video, or if you're just here and you think I'm just starting trouble, I've owned both of these cars. Uh, I've actually owned the B5 for just about as long as I owned the RS4. I had my RS4 for about a month. Um, so you could argue that I didn't get the long-term ownership experience. But in that time, I had uh, plenty of fun. I bought it pretty misrepresented off of Cars and Bins, and it's actually back with its original, I guess, third owner now. Before I jump into why you should buy this car over the RS4, I do want to give the RS4 guys something to chew on because they're all going to be very upset, all three of them, because there's only like 10 of them out there, which we'll talk about. Uh, the RS4 has some great things going for it. Uh, actually. The main thing that it has going for it is the engine. 4.2 liter V8 that revs to 8,000 RPM, sounds glorious. My car actually had a cat back on it, which made it sound even better. And man, no complaints about the engine, power delivery, etc., or the noises that it made. Everything else around it we'll talk about. But uh, another thing that the RS4s have going for them right now, at the time of this video, is they have very, very, very strong resale value. Uh, RS4 you're probably not gonna find for less than, I don't know, I bought mine for 17, uh, and I think that that was a steal. I can't imagine you'll find one for cheaper than that. Uh, if you do, it's probably just as beat, if not more beat than mine was. Uh, but a clean RS4 is going for 25 to 30 grand, let's say. B5, on the other hand, a clean B5 could be had for 15 all day, and there are some deals underneath that, especially if you're okay with sacrificing color and going to I don't know, like a silver or something like that. You could probably get a pretty clean B5 for eight or nine grand. B5s have slowly, kind of, started to appreciate. B7s are on the on the up. They're not. I don't think they're ever coming back down because it's a limited production car, which is another benefit of the B7 RS4 is that it is a limited production car. You're getting a car that not many other people have uh, compared to the B5 S4. These are a dime a dozen, and anyone from you know, 50 year old dude with the world's cleanest one to 16 year old kid who just got their license, it was almost me, um, can own one. So they're, they're much more attainable, the audience is much more varied, whereas the B7 RS4 is kind of a niche community of people who have the means and the interest of buying a special car. Chances are if you see another B7 RS4 on the road, they are also another enthusiast, although I guess you could say the same thing about a B5 at this point. The most important thing to note about a B7 RS4 that the B5 S4 did have to deal with is the B7s did not go through a period of time where they were worth nothing. Now, they dipped for sure. Their price came down for a, a certain period of time. They weren't always 25 or 30 grand for a clean one. You could have a clean one for 15 to 20 at some point, but they were never a $3,000 car. B5 S4, when I was first getting into them, um, in like the mid 20, I don't know, I guess you would call that like 2013 or like 2016, they were not worth anything. Um, and the problem with a car going through that phase is that when they're not worth anything, people don't put nice parts on them. So if you get one that was quote unquote maintained during that period of time when they were worth nothing, chances are you're getting something with some pretty cheap like AutoZone, eBay, whatever parts on it instead of something that's been nicely maintained and has a quality part. The RS4 never went through that chapter. Now there's also not as many AutoZone eBay alternatives for the RS4, but because it was always worth something, I think the owners were always willing to spend money on it. Now, with that said, and the RS4 stuff out of the way to appease those guys so they don't significantly trash my video, um, let's talk about the first reason you should buy a B5 S4 over an RS4. Almost everything about this car is less expensive than what you'd have to do with an RS4. Let me explain that. The parts on this car, uh, the body panels are shared with an A4 for the most part, and the uh, engine is shared with an A6. So it is not an exclusive body like the RS4 is, and it's not an exclusive engine like the RS4 is. It means parts are more readily available, and we dealt with this in the RS4. I snapped a coolant line when I was trying to take my intake manifold off on the RS4. I bought the last one in the country. That is not happening with a B5. There's about 16 bazillion different eBay sellers that'll sell you a part off of either a used B5 or a new like knockoff part if you can't find an OEM. 
For example, uh, the brake lines for this car are NLA from Audi. StopTech makes those all day. If the brake lines on an RS4 went NLA, chances are you're not finding another set. People are gonna start hoarding them. Not much like that happens on the B5. I'm sure there are a couple different niche parts that you can't get as readily as you could before, but there's so many B5 part outs, there's so many B5 uh, uh, scrap teardowns across seas. These cars and the parts for these cars, you can find all over eBay in used condition, or you find a local part out from someone who's, you know, maybe turbos went bad on their $2,000 car and they don't feel like putting money into it. Instead, they're gonna part it out and make more money than what they bought it for. Past the money side of things, let's go into the feel side of things. Um, and this is where the controversy is gonna start because I think this car drives better than the RS4 did. And not just my example, I've had the pleasure of driving a couple RS4s. There is something about the B5, I can't tell you what it is. I've been trying to figure out what it is for the past like two weeks now that this car has been up and running correctly. There is something about this car that has like a sense of magic about it. What I will say about both cars is uh, they are both designed to be enjoyed because both cars will break, both cars will have issues eventually. So when they are running, it gives you that extra sense of enjoyment that you don't get from like a super reliable car. Like, it's almost like a game of do I get in the car or will it start today? Obviously it's not to that extent with the B5 or the RS4, but you know, what's gonna break next? So I might as well enjoy it while it's running. motor noise wise is not as rewarding as the RS4 but there is so much more modification and tunability to a B5 than there is to a B7 uh, and I think that's an important point to touch on. I say that because most if you're buying a car to be quote unquote unique like do something different um, an RS4 is not the car to buy. If you see an RS4 parked next to an RS4, I can almost guarantee you that of the aftermarket parts on that car, about 70% of them are the exact same. They all have uh, they all have the Miltech non-resonated exhaust, some of the downpipes. They all have KWV3s or something or PSS9s on them. Uh, they all have the Jackal Motorsport tune because that's the best. There's all sorts of stuff on an RS4 that you really can't do differently. There's one good way to do it and that's that. Whereas, if you parked five B5s next to each other in a parking lot, I guarantee you, you'll probably find four different sets of turbos on the five cars. Maybe one of them has a single on it. You'll find different coilovers, you'll find different exhausts, you'll find different wheel setups. Uh, whereas with the RS4, it's kind of one way to do it and that's that because there aren't that many people making parts for them. So uh, obviously that's not like a real selling point in a car, but it is worth noting that, you know, the B5 allows you to express yourself a little bit more and be a little bit more unique than, wow, that's a dark tunnel. It allows you to express yourself a little bit more and be a little bit more unique than uh, buying an RS4 and having to do the same mods as everyone else. Finally, and this is gonna be a hot take. This is probably the hottest take of the video. B5 S4 is easier to work on than a B7 RS4. You guys are like, wait a second, B5s are super unreliable, how is that possible? The answer is, let me do a pull. Give me some room here. way faster stock for stock too by the way well, let me explain to you how it's easier to work on a b5 than it is to work on a b7 rs4 simply this comes down again to volume of cars available and the timing of the car these cars came out before forums peak and rode the entire forum peak into like Facebook groups now. That means that there is a write-up for virtually everything. There is a whole section of Audi Zine that's literally locked with two pages of DIYs for this car. There is so much YouTube content out there. People started documenting the forum stuff on YouTube and instead of having a bunch of confusing videos, you the people have perfected the process for each modification, etc. 
before YouTube came around. So you have these great quality YouTube videos only showing you the right way to do things. The amount of knowledge as well as the B5 community, which I think is obviously uh, a little bit different than the B7 community. A lot of people in the B7 community, and I don't want to take away from those that do work on their own cars, but a lot of people in the B7 RS4 community are the kind of people B7 RS4 community is the kind of people that don't work on their own cars, which there's nothing wrong with that. They don't work on their own cars and they don't have as much of a mechanical understanding as the B5 owners do. There is a wealth of knowledge inside the uh, B5 ownership that is there in the B7, but you have to hunt for it harder. Overall, I think if you're exploring buying a B7 RS4, I would urge you to go out there and look at a very clean B5. The B5 is gonna be cheaper, even though it's really clean compared to the RS4. The B5 will probably have more initial problems, but I think that ownership of the B5 and driving experience of the B5 will be more rewarding. Uh, I think that the B5 community is a little bit different than the B7 community, but uh, there is a wealth of knowledge in both of them. The B5 knowledge is a little bit more accessible. and. Most importantly, if you want to go fast, there is way more options in the B5 than there are in the RS4. And I think that the driving experience for the cars, unless you're only carving California back roads, uh, I think the driving experience in the car is probably a little bit better in the B5 than it is in the B7. So if you've driven both or owned both or anything else, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Go out there and spread some positivity. I can't wait to get flamed by all the Audi owners in the comments. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.